Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of History in the Dark, I am your host, Darkness the Curse, and before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267 and Longsight. You are the reason why this content remains a safe distance away. And today we are going to talk about a story that is mostly unfortunate. I'm going to try to make this as an enjoyable watch as I can, but I will tell you guys up front this story is actually very sad, and I'm going to proceed being as respectful as possible. Today we are going to discuss one of the most famous locomotives in America, Union Pacific No. 844, which is also known as a living legend. 844 is distinctive for a few reasons, but the main one is that she's the only steam locomotive that is owned by a North American Class 1 railroad that has never entered retirement. 844 has continued to serve Union Pacific in various capacities since 1944 and the present day. And she's had a pretty stellar record the whole time, suffering practically no major accidents or derailments. But there was at least one incident, and it happened fairly recently. This is the story of the only fatal accident of Union Pacific 844. Now from the get-go, 844 has actually had two accidents technically, but the first one really isn't that notable. Though, for the sake of clarity, I will happily explain it. The first one happened on September 27th, 2012. It was during the UP150 event. 844's tender derailed on a tightly curved track, and it took some time to put it back on the rails. But you might recognize this as a relatively minor incident. No one was hurt, it just was what it was. An accident. A very minor, ineffectual accident. The only thing they lost was some time. But the second incident was a lot more notable and quite depressing. This happened on July 21st, 2018 and 844 was running another excursion run known as the Cheyenne Frontiers Day Special from Cheyenne, Wyoming to Denver, Colorado. This special actually no longer operates based on what I've heard, but 844 did it for a few years, and by all accounts it was an enjoyable experience for everybody involved, with the sole exception of July 21st. A woman by the name of Kelly Yarish was looking to get some pictures of 844 as it passed by on its route. According to her husband, Steve, she was familiar with the area, as they both used to work at the nearby fertilizer company. It was actually where they met, and they got married in 1986. According to Steve, he wouldn't have classified him and his wife as rail fans necessarily, though they had enjoyed taking some trips on some heritage rail lines before. Kelly had apparently gotten into photography, and thought capturing some nice pictures of 844 as it passed by would be a good idea. And this is totally a reasonable thing to do, after all. Rail fans do this all the time. Train spotting is a frequent activity enjoyed by many people, even non-rail fans, especially to capture some images of something as legendary as 844. But what wasn't reasonable was how close Kelly got to the line. As 844 thundered along, traveling about 50 miles per hour, Kelly apparently got way too focused on taking her pictures. Whether it was because of a wide-angle shot, throwing off her perception, or simply because she wasn't paying attention, she wound up stepping close enough to be on the ties of the track themselves. For those unaware, the ties are the wooden bits that hold track together. And just so we're clear, if a train is coming and you are close enough to be standing on the ties, you were too close, back up. Kelly, too distracted to notice, also didn't realize that the fireman inside 844 was shouting at her to move back. The crew on board couldn't do anything but watch helplessly as 844 struck Kelly Yarish. Kelly was ruled to have been killed instantly. The trauma she suffered from the impact was very extensive, and there is actually footage of the incident when it happened, but I've decided not to show it because this isn't a shock channel. I don't run my channel with that mentality just for a bunch of extra clicks. That's not what I do here, and I don't need that footage to give the facts. Additionally, I think it would be highly disrespectful to Kelly's family for me to show footage of their loved one's death just for a few extra views on my YouTube video. I can't justify that, and I'm not gonna do it. If any of you decide to go looking for the footage, I can't stop you, but it is rather gut-wrenching to watch, so you've been warned. 
After the impact, 844's crew brought her to a stop as quickly as they could and allowed authorities to investigate what had happened. The incident was not 844's fault in any way, nor was it her crew's, but I can't imagine that any of them could sleep well after the incident. Train crews are often overlooked when it comes to these kind of traumatic events, but you have to remember any time I've ever talked about a train hitting something, usually the train crew couldn't do anything about it. All they could do is stand there and watch it happen. They can blow the whistle, slam on the brakes, but trains can't stop that quickly. And that crew is going to have to live with the memory of what happened that day for the rest of their lives. Investigators managed to get a whole bunch of video footage of the event, and finally determined that it was, yes, just an accident. Kelly had stepped too close to the tracks. There was nothing else to say, really. 844 had done nothing wrong. It was a tragic incident caused by a simple lack of spatial awareness and my condolences to anybody who knew Kelly or anyone else involved. The sudden death of a loved one is never an enjoyable experience, so I hope you're all doing well. Some people were worried that the incident might be used to end Union Pacific's STEAM program, which is an odd concern because A, look guys, a woman is dead. It's a little bit selfish right now, all right? I'm not worried about the train at the moment. 844 is just fine. So now is not the time for this. Anyone can tell that this just wasn't 844's fault. It could have been any locomotive and the same result would have happened. The only difference is that 844 attracts attention and people have to be aware that regardless of what locomotive it is, you have to stay away from the tracks. But on top of that, Kelly's husband Steve actually spoke out about this concern, saying, it's a part of American life that people enjoy, and for this to be used to put a bad vibe on excursion trains, I definitely don't want that to happen. People enjoy it. If legislation came out that no, we're gonna stop excursion trains, that would make me unhappy. And respect to Steve for being able to say that. He's one of the ones that would have suffered most from the incident, and it speaks well of him that he would have such a reasonable position on the matter. And I think in the end it's clear that the incident did not cause an end to Union Pacific STEAM program. After all, they had done nothing wrong. 844 still runs today, alongside Big Boy 4014. And if there's any lesson to be garnered from this sad story, it's this. Look guys, I'm a rail fan. I love train spotting. It's a fun activity. But regardless of whether you're actually there to see the trains, or you're just passing by in a car, on foot, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Respect the rails. These are large, heavy, powerful pieces of equipment and they're capable of causing some real damage if the tracks they run on aren't treated with respect. Stop, look, and listen. Because I think I speak for us all when I say that I'd rather not hear about anything like this ever happening again. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.